Welcome back folks, it's your boy, Editor Matt. As an editor, there are so many things that you need to know. This is eight essential things that every editor needs to know. If you've been editing for a while, hopefully there's a few things here that will help you. If you're an experienced editor, I sure hope you already know all this. So I wanna share my top eight things that you need to know to become an editor. All right, so the first thing every editor needs is obviously a computer. I mean, I guess you could edit on an iPad, but this isn't the video for that. So when choosing a computer for editing, we have two decisions to make. The first one, do we want Mac or do we want PC? The second decision is do we want desktop or do we want laptop? Your decision here doesn't really matter too much. It's more about personal preference. I personally do not prefer Mac over PC or PC over Mac, but I do much prefer Mac laptops and I much prefer PC desktops. Let me explain why. I have used and edited on many laptops over the years and I have not found a laptop that is as good as a MacBook Pro. I'm sure there's a lot of PC fanboys out there who live and die by their Alienware laptops. In my opinion, the MacBook experience is way better than any other laptop I have I've ever used. Also, things seem to just work. When it comes to Windows laptops, you can get really powerful machines, but nothing just feels the way that a MacBook does or works as well. But now when it comes to desktops, that's entirely different. If you're looking for a desktop editing machine, I would highly recommend building a really nice PC. It's gonna cost you way less than an iMac or an iMac Pro or even a Mac Pro. You're going to get some very incredible performance for your money. Also, you can play video games. That's important. If you've never built a computer before, but you're interested, you can check out this video here where I built my PC and you can take a look at the parts that I used and maybe build your own. Okay, great, you have a computer, you shot your video, you're ready to start editing. The next thing you need is a good pair of headphones. I know this sounds silly, but you'd be surprised. And I'm not talking like studio headphones. I'm just saying like, get a decent pair of headphones, even if they're like Apple earbuds. Okay, maybe not those. I actually just use like some gaming headphones. These are like a hundred bucks. They work great. This is really important for video editing because if you're adding any music or sound effects to your video, you need to be able to hear all the highs and the lows of the music to make sure it's not clashing with your voice. That's really just the main thing with the headphones. Or as an alternative, if you don't like headphones, you could get a studio monitor speakers, um, anything that's just gonna give you that good range of audio. Anyways, let's move on. Number three, editing software. So here you have three main options to go with. You have Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve. Let's start over here. This is only if you're using Mac. If you're not using Mac, we can just get rid of it. But let's say you are using Mac. I would highly recommend using Final Cut Pro. Apple has done an incredible job with their video editor. It's extremely efficient and will work really well on almost any Mac. It's really smooth and honestly, I wish that I was using Final Cut, but I have my own reasons why I stick with Premiere. Which takes us to the next one, Premiere. Premiere is really great. It is like the industry standard video editing software. The main reason why I use Premiere is the dynamic link. It's really important for me to be able to animate or use visual effects by just right clicking on a clip and editing in After Effects. Especially if it's just something small, it's super important. Although Premiere is known for crashing, being slow, unreliable, it is still one of the best options out there for video editing. It is also the most expensive option, but you're getting the whole library of applications. And then moving on to the third option here, DaVinci Resolve. If you're just starting out and you're on PC, I would highly recommend trying out DaVinci Resolve. It's going to give you a really good idea of what it's like to edit videos, and the best part is that it's free. Or at least there is a free version, I should say. You can purchase the studio version where they enable, um, I, I believe it's just noise reduction and stabilization. The nice thing with DaVinci Resolve is that it is also a one-time payment. It also has a lot of features going beyond just your regular editor. You can do some incredibly advanced color Grading, as well as some visual effects. Okay, moving on to number four. This is one of the most difficult and frustrating things about editing videos, good music. The worst part about editing a video is when you can't find the right song. You can find so many songs that are, oh, they're almost there, but they're not quite the right one. So I'm gonna share with you some of the best places to find music and this is exactly where I get mine. These are the three places that we use for Maddie's videos and they're the three places that I use for my videos. And I'll share with you kind of the things I like about each one. Starting with number one, I would say I use probably about 50% of my music from this site. It is Epidemic Sound. I'm sure you've heard of it. So what I would say about Epidemic Sound is that it has a very large variety. The music is quite good. And my favorite thing about Epidemic Sound that I think gets unnoticed by a lot of other people 
people is the find similar button. It'll show you other songs that have the same tags, I guess, and fit the same category as that song. I use this all the time. For example, if I have a song that I used in a previous video and I want something similar but not the same song, I'll go to that song and I'll click find similar. There's a free trial for Epidemic Sound as well as the other two music services that I'm gonna talk about uh, down below for you to download. And just so you guys know, they are affiliate links. So if you guys try out their service, you are also supporting the channel. So thank you. And the next music site I use is Musicbed. Now, Musicbed is pretty dang sweet. The quality of their music is much higher than a lot of the other ones. Also, Musicbed is not a royalty-free site. They are a music licensing site, which means that Musicbed is not creating music for the site. They're contacting artists that already have published music and they are adding them into the library of songs that you can use for your videos. This is why the quality is much higher. You'll probably hear songs on there that you think should be in a commercial or on the radio. Like it is very high quality music. That being said, you also pay for the size of your YouTube channel. So if you have a lot of subscribers, you'll be paying more. And if you have less subscribers, you'll be paying less. Traditionally, if you're going to license these songs for your videos, it would cost you a lot more to put them in your videos. So I think the perspective here is that because you're a small channel, they'll be giving you a discount on those subscriptions, which I think is pretty cool. And then moving on to number three, we have Artlist. Artlist is actually the first music service that I ever used and a very large library and selection. I would say out of the three here, it would come third for quality of music. Although their music is still very good and I would recommend trying them out. Actually, I would say try out all of these services. I mean, they all have free trials. You got nothing to lose. See which one you like the best and stick with that one. Number five, organization. As an editor, it's good to have all your files in order. I'm not talking about tagging every single piece of clip or anything like that. I'm just talking a basic file structure to keep your video files neat and tidy. Let's take a look at my last video for example and I'll give you an idea of a good way to keep your files neat and tidy. All right, let's make this quick. Here is my file structure. It's very simple, nothing complicated. If I shot it on a camera, I make a folder for that camera. For example, here is my Canon 6D, which is a bunch of photos. And down here I have my Canon uh, EOS RP which is all my video files. I got my iPhone, my images, my After Effects file, uh, music, screenshots, time-lapse, tapes. And then I usually just leave the exported video file in the root, just so I can access it easier later on. There's a lot more advanced ways you could do this, but if you're just editing for YouTube, don't waste your time. It's just a YouTube video you wanna keep moving, you know? One tip here if you're using Premiere is to create a Premiere folder to put your file in. I never used to do this, but ever since I have, it's very nice. Premiere likes to create its own files and folders and extra junk in your project. Number six, good shortcuts. If you wanna be good and quick at editing, you need good shortcuts. After you're done watching this video, you can click right here and watch the video I made about my shortcuts that I use. But let me just share a few things that have changed my life. I believe it is called Ripple Trim Previous Edit to Playhead and Ripple Trim Next Edit to Playhead. That sounds right. I set these to Q and W. This makes editing videos so much faster. I've talked about it in almost every single video of mine that I mentioned shortcuts. When I'm editing a B-roll sequence, literally all I do is Q, W, Q, W, Q, W, and then I readjust those clips using the slide tool. And as a bonus add on to number six, it's a good workspace, which I also have a video about your workspace. If you wanna check that out. Now these are more for Premiere Pro, but if you're using DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut, uh, they should have equivalent shortcuts and uh, workspace modifications. Okay, moving on to number seven. If you wanna be a good editor, you need to know how to color correct and color grade. Now I'm not saying you need to be a, a professional colorist, you just need to know how to turn your flat footage into good looking edited footage. Honestly, it's not too hard if you break it down. You have contrast, saturation, and color. And when you adjust all three of those, you can turn your flat footage into great looking Rec 709. Some camera companies might suggest using a conversion LUT on your log profile to convert it to Rec 709, but I'm gonna show you real quick how to manually correct it. Okay, here we have a flat piece of footage. We're gonna come into our Lumetri color panel. And the first thing we're gonna look at is contrast. So let's open up our scopes. And I like to start with the blacks. I pull them down to where I like them. And then I follow with the shadows and then pull the whites up and then the highlights. And now I'm gonna add a bunch of contrast and I'm gonna go back and pull the blacks down and then the shadows again. Uh, right here, I'm just trying to pull the blacks down to the zero. If you don't know what this is, you'll wanna look up how to use your waveform scope. And with the whites and the highlights, we don't want them peaking too much. Uh, so that looks good there. And then I'm just gonna pull my highlights up a bit more. As you can see, once you start to add contrast, the colors start to come out, but we're gonna add a little bit more saturation anyways, not too much, maybe like 120. 
yeah, that looks fine. Now we're gonna move on to color. The first thing is our white balance. Uh, my white balance actually looks pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it where it is. And then if you wanna add a LUT, we'll go to creative. I actually use Maddie's Cine LUTs 2.0. I really like cinema. Drop that down to 25%. Yeah, it looks good. And then we're gonna move down to our curves. This is where you can really perfect your skin tones. I like to jump into the Hue versus Luma. Um, your skin tones are between the, the red and the orange here. Uh, so I just kind of create my keys and then pull that up a bit. And that makes it look a little bit more natural. Now with my monitor, I honestly cannot tell if my skin tones are off, but from here that looks pretty okay. And for YouTube, I mean everyone's seeing it on different screens anyways, it doesn't really matter too much. And that's basically it. That's a super simple way to turn your log footage into graded footage. I'd like to do an entire proper uh, color grading video, um, but as of now, I don't have the monitor for that, so we'll have to wait for that video. Number eight, the last thing you need to know as an editor is how to export your videos properly. There's probably some default preset export settings that you can use, but if not, if you're done your video and you're ready to upload it, you want to use H.264 and a pretty high bitrate. I would recommend anywhere between 30 megabytes per second to 45 megabytes per second. And one really big trick here is to upscale your 1080p videos to 4K. And the reason why we do this is so that YouTube will see your video and allocate more bitrate for your 4K video, even though it's actually only 1080. This will make your 1080p video look much higher quality. I personally only do one pass on my videos. Um, I have had issues with ghosting when I've done two passes. Now as an editor, sometimes we are not exporting for upload, we're exporting to pass to another editor. In this case, I would recommend using ProRes. Thankfully, Premiere Pro on Windows now has this. Uh, they never used to, but I think maybe a year or two ago they introduced that. If you don't know, ProRes is a super smooth uh, light compression codec. It's really good for putting back into editors. I'd recommend using ProRes 422. If you're tight on storage, you can use ProRes LT as well. And that's basically it. If you can get a hang of these eight essential things, you are on your way to becoming a great editor, like myself. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stick around for the next video. Video. If you want to join a community of other filmmakers and editors, you can click the link down below to join the Discord. That's it for me. I am Editor Matt, and this was 8 Essential Things That You Need to Know as an Editor.